What's good, Tilray traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back in the pursuit of wealth. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you had a great weekend. Today is Monday, July 11th, and in this short video, I'm going to be dedicating this one to Tilray Brands. Going to do some technical analysis and talk about whether or not we're going to see the target of two dollars and twenty-five cent USD met. Uh, that is the target from the weekly bear flag. Canopy Growth actually hit its target of its weekly bear flag today, and uh, we'll look over that and more. Before we get to it, though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me on the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe and tick the bell. You'll be notified on any future videos. I did post uh, a warning video here on July 2nd. If you haven't watched that, uh, I encourage you to go check it out. But essentially, I gave my price target of the measured move from the weekly bear flag. And we had weekly bear flags across the whole sector. Oxley confirmed its weekly bear flag target of $0.08, cents, actually extended past that and hit $0.07. Cents. We know that CGC just hit its target of $2.33 USD. It actually dropped a little bit below that as well. And we know that GTII, there was Trulieve, High Tide had a weekly bear flag, Tilray. Uh, so again, when we have all these weekly bear flags across the sector, it increases the odds that we're going to see it on an individual name, right? So if it was just, uh, you know, Tilray, or if it was just CGC with a weekly bear flag, then we'd be a little less concerned. But the fact that we have it across the sector, both American and Canadian companies, is a little bit concerning. Uh, so again, we'll look at the technical analysis here in just a moment, and we'll give a quick update on Tilray. Uh, but essentially down almost 8% to close the day today, uh, not looking too good. Um, did want to share this as well. This was posted by Tony XL, and this was posted today, uh, this afternoon. And holding steady at number one market share in Canada and set to gain from new products launched in July. Um, we know that they had a ton of Redican products, new Redis Plus, things like that. Uh, but you can see here, uh, Hexo and Tilray. Uh, Tilray actually looked like it dropped a bit. So you can see here that the yellow line is Hexo, still number one. And we know that Tilray and Hexo, their financial and commercial partnership is due to close at some point in Q3. So it was some point sometime between now and September. Uh, I think that it's more than likely going to close at some point at the end of this month or uh, next month in August. But you can see Hexo is number one. And then number two is the orange line. So it looks like VFF. And that one's a little surprising. And this is uh, only Alberta, BC, Ontario, and Saskatchewan. So that's likely why actually, because um, we're talking about just those four provinces. provinces. Uh, but after that, we're looking at Tilray, and then after that, you've got a tie between Cron and it looks like Oxley. So uh, Hexo still sitting strong at number one, so it's no it's no wonder that Tilray wants to uh, take a piece of, of Hexo, right? We know that Tilray tried to buy Hexo in November. That, that was reported by BNN, and they were interviewing Erwin Simon. Erwin said that they had been chasing Hexo for months, and that they even tried to buy Hexo. That's straight from the horse's mouth. They even tried to buy Hexo for two or three dollars a share back in November of 2021, and Hexo turned them down. And we know that Redican had a competing offer of about 1.4 billion from another competing LP, and I think it was Tilray because ever since, uh, you know, uh, they turned that down and went with Hexo for 925 million. Uh, they had a competing offer for $1.4 billion. That's why I don't think Hexo overpaid for Redican is because they had a competing offer for $1.4 billion, but it was likely from Tilray and it was likely majority in stock, whereas Hexo was giving them $400 million in cash and then um, $525 million in, in stock, right? So they got a big cash component. Uh, but that just tells me that uh, ever since Redican, you know, uh, was looking to get bought out, and to uh, to go through these acquisitions, that's when Tilray really started to spike in interest in Hexo, and they even tried to buy them in November, and they continued to chase them. And now with the amendment, we know that Tilray could potentially own 50% of of Hexo. Uh, but again, Tilray won't own any of Hexo until they convert that equity, right? It's a convertible note. So in order to convert to to convert into equity, uh, we would notice about we would know about that, right? We had an article from CGC. Uh, canopy growth where uh, they were issuing shares to pay off their convertible debts. So essentially, uh, they were issuing shares uh, to pay off that money and that debt versus, you know, just using their cash position to pay off that debt. Uh, they issued more shares. So it was dilution. And we knew about it. So same thing will happen when Tilray, if Tilray, if and when Tilray does convert the Hexo debt, we'll find out about it, but we'll also see it in the share count for Hexo. So that's something that we can monitor. Uh, but just keep in mind, Tilray doesn't own anything. Um, Tilray doesn't own any, um, you know, of, of Hexo until they convert that debt, right? And something that uh, I want to bring up here as well 
uh, just going into the private POW group community. Um, you can see also this was uh, posted high tide up uh, about 15%. I just did a video on that. Check that out. Could help the uh, could help the sector going into tomorrow. Uh, but I did post this in the group and on socials. Uh, this is straight from the horse's mouth as well. Erwin uh, Simon, CEO of Tilray. It's important both companies are still separate independent pub public companies. That's going to be important to make sure that we draw the line there, said CEO Erwin Ir Simon, right? Uh, so that is uh, something that I posted that I, I, I really do think that they're going to remain independent. They can both stay independent, right? And Tilray can own a majority stake or a controlling interest in Hexo. But I just, I can't see, we know that Hexo actually went through, um, they they had a lawsuit, a uh, company tried to infringe on their trademark in the US and they went through and they actually won that lawsuit. So I think that their trademark and the brand Hexo is extremely valuable. And I really don't think that they're going to to merge the two companies in terms of, um, you know, like stock tickers. Again, like they said, it's an it's very important that they remain independent uh, public companies. And I think it's going to be a similar partnership to what, uh, you know, Microsoft did when they saved Apple from bankruptcy in 1997. I think Tilray and Hexar are going to go on to shape this industry together. And number one and number two, essentially, in terms of overall market share in Canada working together. Uh, good luck, rest of the LPs in Canada and soon to be MS. SOs because like we, we we know we're likely going to see Tilray expand into the U.S. through the acquisition of MedMen uh, upon, upon full-blown legalization. They're going to be actually purchasing some convertible debt from them, right? So they're going to be actually taking a position and owning some equity in MedMen uh, once federally, uh, federally permissible to do so. But if we take a look at the weekly bear flag, so if we take the high to the low, anything under the 0.32 FIB here at $3.84 USD, this is the NASDAQ ticker, is a potential for a weekly bear flag. We did confirm it. We have support at 302 and we did lose that. We hit $3, but essentially it was a, a two penny. That's not enough to really confirm uh, the, the weekly bear flag. But if we do lose, it's all about $3 from here. If we lose $3 from here, that will be a weekly inside bar bear break and we're targeting the measured move here of about two dollars and 25 cents usd on uh, on tilray which would imply another uh, but another 28 percent of downside from here i know that's not what people want to hear but we are seeing weekly bear flags ac across the sector confirm and cdc actually met its target today and its weekly bear flag you can see here i had been saying for about three weeks now i'm targeting 233 and today we hit 231 so again the more confluence and the more names that are confirming weekly bear flags and hitting, hitting those targets increases the odds that we could see Tilray as well. But it's all about support there at $3, lose that, then we're likely heading back down to that uh, $2.25 area, which would mean that would be an all-time low. Uh, previous all-time low is 243. So watch 243 and then 225, the measured move of the weekly bear flag. In order to negate this bear flag, we need to get above $3.84 convincingly and then uh, and we'll be confident that we're not going to see that that bear flag target met. But that's all technical analysis is, is just probabilities and odds. And right now it's saying that we're likely going to see another leg down more than likely, right? Odds are more in the favor of more downside versus more upside. But again, We'll just be watching key support and resistances. That, that's all we can do from here. And uh, we know that the, the sector is just in bad need of a catalyst, right? We know that Chuck Schumer could be dropping a bill in the second week of August, and we know we could see potential for safe banking leading into the fall. So we do have some catalysts to be looking out for. We still have yet to close over the 10-week moving average there at 379. We are st starting to see a bull cross here on the uh, stochastic and the MACD, which is a little reassuring. And then in terms of the weekly moving averages, we did have a bear cross of the 50 and the 100 weekly, but we have nothing nearby until $7.80. And then the 50-day moving average up at $4.06 after having a death cross of the 50 and the 200 back in August of 2021 last summer. Uh, but it's just been a straight bleed ever since and uh, now down over 95% on Tilray. I do think we're getting close to a bottom um, and that MJ is ripe for a short squeeze. We could easily see 50 to 100% moves across the sector once we see, um, you know, a macro level reversal across the sector. And again, we have some key catalysts that are coming up here into the fall. We know that the summertime is usually a bit of a drop off in act activity. We see a bit of a lull. Uh, so it's entirely possible that we see that one more leg down and then a massive run, in my opinion, into the fall. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me, disagree with me. Always uh, enjoy conversing with all of you and hearing your opinion uh, but going to end it there if you could smash like help support me in the channel if you're new subscribe take the bell to be notified on, on any future updates thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth it's rob with power group and we'll see you in the next video